Hello, welcome to the Kuvings Healthy Kitchen. My name's Gary Douse. Today in the kitchen, I have the Kuvings B8000 domestic cold press juicer, and I'm gonna show you some recipes that we can do with the juicer. The first thing we wanna to do today is show you the different attachments that you can get with the juicer and all the yummy food that you can make. Now, with a cold press juicer, we're gonna make some mango sorbet. Yes, you can make sorbet with the juicer. We're gonna make some almond milk. And when you make almond milk in a cold press juicer, the reason we love it so much is because you don't need any nut bags or anything to squeeze it out. You just all gets done in the juicer and you make beautiful nut milk. Um, we're gonna make a something for the little ones, something for the kids out there. We're gonna make some apple sauce and we're gonna finish up with a apple, lemon and ginger juice for you today. So before we get started with the B8000 juicer, the question we get asked a lot at Kuvings is, what's the difference between all the models? Now we have quite a few models in the Kuvings range of cold pressed juicers because there's so many different reasons people juice, different things they wanna do with their juicer. And I just wanna explain a little bit of the difference between the entry level machine, this is the domestic model, and the professional one. So at the back here, I've got the, one of the professional models. So hopefully you can see this on the camera. I've got three little things that I wanna show you. First one is the press that sits inside. So the difference between the professional model and the domestic model, if you can see that, there's a it's all hollowed out underneath in the professional one. In the domestic one, it's flat across the bottom. What that means is with the professional model, it just extracts a little bit more of the pulp from the juice. With the domestic one, you get a little bit more pulp still coming through the press into the juicer. And it comes, you can get this extra attachment which will sit over the uh, juice jug so that when the juice comes out, it'll strain it for you if you don't want that extra pulp in your juice. The second thing that we wanna talk about is the bowls. So if we have a look at the different bowls, you can see here, I'm not sure again, you should be able to see it there, but with the domestic one, it's flat across here. With the professional one, they've cut it away a little bit to allow the pulp to flow out a little bit smoother. So with the entry level machine, you just wanna cut your produce up a little bit smaller and feed it a little bit slower. I kind of say that it's, this is the easy way of cold press juicing. I don't know if you remember, but cold press juices, they used to be big and cumbersome. They used to be um, gears that you had to cut all your produce down into small pieces, push it down onto the gears in order to extract the juice. Then Kuvings invented the vertical style of cold press juicer. So, where you can just put the produce in the top and gravity pulls it down onto the press. So when they invented this, they bought out this B-series juicer and it made cold press juicing so much easier. It's one of our most awarded machines, this one. It was the first one that did it. it has the full fruit, so you can pop, uh, I've got some apple here, you can pop a whole apple in, you can pop whole oranges, whole pears can fit down the machine. It'll pull it in and press it and squeeze it and extract the juice. As you move up the models, we go to the, from the B series to the C series, it's a little bit easier again because of that extra uh, cutaway here on the hole, on the, on the bowl, and the press. Okay, so you get a finer juice. We've got another series as well, which is the E series juicer. And then we chop, which is this one. So when we go from C, from B to C to E, the E series juices have this flip gate lid, right? It just makes it even easier again. I don't have to push down with my hands and plunge it in. I can just feed the produce in and it's a self feeding mechanism. So that's a little bit of an explanation of the difference between the B, C and E series cold press juicer for you. But today, in the kitchen, we're going to use the B-series and make some sorbet, some mango sorbet. So let me pull over what we've got here. I've got some mango. 
I want to put some lime in with this mango and we've got some maple syrup. Okay, so there's an extra attachment which you can get. It's an optional extra and it helps make juicing citrus fruits like oranges, um, grapefruits and limes a lot easier. Let me show you that because we're going to do that first. Easy to just pop the headset off like I just did there. Pop the citrus attachment here. You've probably all had the old school where you're using your citrus juicer like that at home. Well, this machine, this little attachment is going to do it for you. Let me show you. Easy as putting the uh, oranges or the grapefruit or the lime on top and it will extract some juice. Let me try, show you here. So we're just going to cut that one up. I've got a second lime here. I'm just going to grab that one as well and show you how we can make, how easy it is to use the machine. Switch it on. And that's all it takes to just extract maximum amount. You're going to get so much more with so less, less work. It's got a nice it's got a nice jug underneath which is going to catch the juice for you. And then you can just pour it into your recipe. So with the mango sorbet that I'm making, I want to put some lime in with it. So let's before I feed it into the juicer, we're just going to put some lime juice on that. Fantastic. And then what I want is a little bit of maple syrup for this one. So pour in a little bit of maple syrup there. Right, so now my mango lime juice is, mango lime sorbet is ready to go. Okay, so let's get the uh, juicer in place. I've got the smooth sorbet strainer inside of the machine. So this is the extra attachments that you can get with the cold press juicer that helps you to make sorbets frozen desserts, ice creams. Today we're making the sorbet. Okay, so turning that on. All you need to do is to grab your spoon and just feed it slowly straight into the top of the machine. And what you'll see is the mango sorbet starting to come out Oh, it smells so good already. So we're just squeezing and pressing when we're making the sorbet. A little bit more. I've got about, about two cups of mango here. And I've put the juice of one lime and then a tablespoon of maple syrup to give it that little bit of extra sweetness. Listen how quiet it is, guys. All we're doing is squeezing and pressing. There's no fast spinning metal blades blending it all up. It's just squeezing and pressing the fruits. Okay, look at that. Can you see that there? Let me put it into a, uh, into a bowl for you so you can get the feel of it. Now mango, I really love uh, mangoes when they come into season. And they're actually a really good dessert to have at the end of a day because the mango helps to increase serotonin levels in the body. And if you know about serotonin, it helps you get a good night's sleep. So this little dessert, having that at the end of the night, I'm sure it's going to help you go get a good night's rest. Let's do the taste test, shall we? It's, I can tell already how creamy it is. Mm. And the lime just gives it that little bit of tanginess as well. It's a really good recipe. I have to have a second one.
Mm, fantastic. Now, let me put that to the side. So, that's our mango lime sorbet recipe. I'm going to switch the attachment out now, which is in there, and we're going to make a nut milk. But I'm not going to clean the juicer. We're just going to switch the attachment and get the nut milk in. So, put that one to the side. And we've got a nice almond milk here ready to go. So I'll just check that I've got the right one. So now when we're making almond milk, we're using the juice strainer. This is the gold strainer that comes with the juicer. So you don't need any extra attachments when you're making almond milk or any of your nut milks. You just use the standard gold attachment that comes with the juicer. So we'll pop that in. Press goes into the center. And we're ready to go. So almond milk, what do we need to make our almond milk with? We need almonds. Now we've soaked those overnight. So there's a cup of almonds there. I'm gonna put in a little bit of date into this one for some sweetness. And then we want some fresh, clean water to go in our almond milk. Now, if you're like me, I do like to have a bit of almond milk. And when you look in the stores and you buy your almond milk in the stores, you'll see 2%, 3% almonds. Maybe that's about all you get in it. When you're making your almond milk at home, you can control the percentage of almonds. So more like 10 or 20% and it's going to be much more flavor for you. The other thing that happens when you make when you buy store-bought almond milk is they often put gums and fillers and additives into the milk to package it and ship it around the world. When you're making it at home, you've literally got two ingredients, almond and water, and put in a little bit of sweetness like some dates. So less is best here. So here we go. All right, we'll just turn it on. I'll show you really, really simple almonds. I'm going to pop them in the juicer and then just pour in a little bit of water in. And all you need to do is just alternate between almonds and water. Handful of almonds, handful of water, handful of almonds, a little bit of water. At some point just pop your dates in. Now you can use some other things to sweeten it. Make sure though, really make sure you remove the pit from inside the date because we don't want that going through the juicer. Pear, slices of pear is another really good thing you can use to sweeten your almond milk. Of course you don't have to sweeten it, you can, if you really love your almonds. And have a look at this, look how much milk I've got already. The bowl's nearly full, I've got 400 mils there. And we're just pouring out the almond milk like that. No need to strain it. No need to squeeze it in a bag. And what we've got coming out on the side here, that's the almond meal. So the almond meal, you can keep this and use it for baking, use it for making cookies, use it for different recipes so that nothing gets wasted. Okay, have a look how much I've got here. So there we go. How simple was that to make our own almond milk at home? Now, two to one is about the ratio that I like to use. So uh, one cup of almonds, two cups of water, but it's totally up to you. You can use three cups if I ran another cup of uh, water through that juicer now I'd pick up a whole heap more I could run another two cups so you uh, get to control the flavor the texture the quantity that you put in which is another reason why we love making our own almond milk so let's just put that into the bottle you can see the how smooth and simple that was right try Mm. Yeah, there's so much more almond flavour. It's, it's just got so much more taste than your store-bought milks. I really like it. Let's put this aside. 
There we go. All right, so we've made our uh, mango uh, sorbet and our almond milk. The next recipe I'll have for you today in the B8000 domestic juicer is one for the little ones, one for the kids. We're gonna make some apple sauce and I'm gonna show you a special treat we can do with the apple sauce and we're gonna make some apple donuts. Let's have a look at that one, shall we? I'll swap this headset out. And we're gonna bring over the smoothie strainer. Now, how do we make apple sauce? Let's have a look here, the recipes that I've, ingredients that I've got. So for this apple sauce, I'm gonna use some steamed apples. I'm gonna put some celery in there, great way to get a little bit of vegetable into the little ones. We've got some pitted dates again, and I've got a little bit of cinnamon here for some flavor. So let me swap that to the side and show you what attachment we're using to make this one. This one is, just put it there so it doesn't roll around. Now we've got the smooth, smoothie strainer. So the first recipe we used the sorbet strainer to make the mango. The second recipe, the almond milk, we use the juice strainer. And for this recipe, we're using the smoothie strainer. So all of the Kuvings cold pressed juices have access to three different strainers. Those three different strainers can be used to make so much more than just juice. And it's why we love the range of Kuvings cold pressed juices. Let me pop that back on. Okay, we need, a, we need another jug there. All right, so apple sauce, let me pull these over. The first thing I wanna do when we're making a sauce like this is I'm just gonna mix the ingredients together, right? Because we're not making it in a blender. We're not using metal blades to spin it all around and breaking it. We're gonna cold press it. So we wanna mix the ingredients together. So let's start with, put the celery in there. With the dates, I'm just going to just give them a little chop up so that they're a bit smaller. These are medjool dates, they're fresh. You find them in the uh, fridge in a health shop. I will pop those in there like that. Okay, with the apples. Apples, simple, peel them, core them, and then pop them in the steamer. Now, the reason I like to just cut that up, the juice will easily press and squeeze a quarter of a steamed apple. We can do a whole apple without even being steamed. So it's not about the, whether it can press it or not. I'm doing this so that we get all the flavor nicely combining together. I've used red apples here. You can use green apples if you want a bit more tartness. One of my favorite is the golden delicious apples. Couple more. Looking really good. And then we're just going to give that a little bit of a mix. Before we feed it through the juicer. Excellent. Okay, so that's ready to go. Okay, so we've got the smoothie strainer in there. We're going to get you on. And there we go. Look at this, just handfuls at a time. What you'll start to see is as we're squeezing and pressing the ingredients together, we're going to be getting this apple sauce coming through the machine. And I don't know if you've looked at your apple sauce at home, but if you buy it in the store, of course, again, it's packaged. It's been, they've added preservatives to it. They've added different fillers to uh, put it into a, a, a glass jar and uh, ship it around the world. One of the main ingredients that they often use in apple sauce is something called citric acid. 
Now citric acid is E330. And what we don't like about having citric acid in foods is where it comes from. What they do is they get a fungus, a genetically modified fungus. They feed it sugar and then it turns it into an acid. And they use that acid as a preservative in food. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if it's me and I'm doing some apple sauce for the young ones, I probably don't want a genetically modified fungus <laughs> getting into the uh, uh, recipe that I'm using, right? Right, so that's me, but everyone up to yourselves. Have a look at the ingredients, guys. All that's in here, it's come from nature. Apple, celery, date. It's just so easy. Okay, a little bit more. And you'll see that sauce starting to come out now. When you're pressing and squeezing, just take your time. You don't need to go too fast. It's not going to blend it all up quickly. Just squeezing and pressing. Now, while that's happening there, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with, these, with the apple sauce. So this is what I call an apple donut. So we'll take a normal apple, and we're just going to cut off a couple of slices, whole slices. One, two, and three there. We'll use those three. They look good. And what I'm going to do is just take the core out. Just quickly, pop the core out like that, and you can see I'm starting to make little apple donuts already. One, two, and three. Excellent. So now let me close that one off. I've got a spoon here. I've got a spoon here in the kitchen. So let me just put some of that. Okay, look at that. Beautiful. Now I want to put a little bit of cinnamon onto that one. Like so. A little bit of cinnamon. And now what you're going to do is you're going to take that apple sauce and we just want to spread it around your apple rings. So simple, so easy. And then we're going to sprinkle. We're going to put a little bit of topping on that one. So a little bit of coconut. Look at that. How good does that look? You could, put some, you could put some fresh raspberries on there. You could put some nuts. You could put anything you want. So now you've got these magnificent little apple donuts. Is this a great treat for the kids? I think it is, but even the big kids are going to love it. Let's try. Mmm. So good, guys. So good. Everyone around here, you're going to love this recipe, I'm sure. Mmm. Wow, excellent. Now, excuse me. <laughs> um, what we love about healthy snacks, as I've said to you before, it's not getting all the preservatives, all the fillers, all the gums, all the additives, preservatives, vitamins, minerals that they put into food in order to package it, keep it preserved and ship it. Using nature is such a healthy alternative for the kids. It's going to taste beautiful. It's going to be sweet. They can indulge and make a big tray of them. Give it a go next time you have them around. I'll put this to the side. Okay, so one last recipe for you today and we're going to actually make some juice now. So now I've got the juice strainer in there. And what I'll do is, I've got my chopping board somewhere, it's over here. I'm 
Let's make an apple, lemon and ginger juice. Now this recipe, I have to tell you, is at Kuvings headquarters the most tried and tested recipe that we've ever made. So much so that it made the cover of my Juice Chef book. Um, you can see the apple, lemon and ginger there. We've made this so many times. The feedback is always amazing. It's a great tasting juice when you combine the green apple with the lemon and the ginger. And it's not just about taste for this one. This juice recipe is also very, very good for the body. The nutrition that's in the three of those ingredients, when they combine together, they help to detox and cleanse the body of... Uh, <laughs> They help to detox and cleanse the body of residues that you might get inside. So let me show you how we're going to make this one. I've got some green apples. I've got some green apples here. I've got some fresh ginger. I've got some lemon. Now with your apples, you'll see they often have these little stalks on the top. We want to make sure we get rid of those stalks because we don't want the stalk going through the juicer of course so we just twist them they come out really easy so about five apples five or six apples will do this recipe but before we before I do the actual recipe let me show you something about apple juice so I'm going to make some here if I can get a jug from somebody to go underneath the uh, front, that would be great. So I've got apples. We can just pop them in whole. We use the pusher to push it down onto the press. Thank you. And instantly we're getting the juice coming out. How easy is it to juice whole apples? But what I want to show you is the apple juice itself. So let's have a look at this. I've got a little jar here. And I'm going to pour that. This is green apple. Have a look at the colour. Oh wow, it's amazing. Now, if you buy apple juice in a store, it looks like this. Look at the difference. One is living, the other one is not living. One is straight out of the machine, cold pressed, it hasn't been burnt, it hasn't oxidized. What that means is you're getting the maximum nutrition from the apple. This one in the store, it's been pasteurized, it's been heat treated. It's not living anymore. When you drink this, it's just like drinking lolly water. No nutrition, no enzymes, none of the vital ingredients that you want from your produce. So, that's why we want to make a cold pressed juicer. I hope that came across on the camera just to show you that colour. Now look, apples, right? Look at the skin. Right, look at the flesh. It's not green, right? It's white. Right, so where's that green colour coming from? That's coming from the skin of the apple. So when you use a cold pressed juicer, it's squeezing and pressing, even getting the nutrition out of the skin of the produce. So, so much healthier and so much better for you than your store-bought stuff. All right, that's enough on that one. Let's move on and I'll make this recipe for you. So we're gonna have some ginger here. If you really like ginger, up to you how much you put in. I sort of say about a thumbnail size. With ginger, it's quite woody, right? It's, it's a root, right? So I can't just put a knob of ginger into the press. It's gonna really struggle to get through and be pressed. So we just need to cut it up into some little pieces, about the size of a thumb is, is rule of thumb. With the lemon, perfect time to use the skin, right? Because with the apple, it's gonna add a really nice flavor to the recipe. So what I wanna do is just chop off the ends. The ends of the lemon are often really pointy and woody. We don't want that in going through the juicer. And then I'm just going to do a couple of slices with the skin on, right? So with the skin on, because I want that zest, I want that nutrition, I want the lemon essential oil that's in the lemons coming through and feeding our bodies. So let's make this recipe, shall we? We've got about five apples here. So 
So with the domestic model, cold press juicer, there's a little fin, little safety fin, so you can't put a hand down there, which is why the apple stops about halfway. And then I just need to push it through past the safety fin. So there's three apples in there. Now I want to put that little bit of ginger in. You don't need to put a lot of ginger in. The reason is because when you squeeze and press, I know I've been talking about it a fair bit, when you squeeze and press, you get so much more flavor, so much more nutrition. You don't need to use a lot of it. It's not getting spun and spat out into the bucket. Another apple in there. Now look at the lemon. Easy, we can just pop in a couple of slices. You might be asking, why don't I put the whole lemon in whole? Why did I cut the slices? And it's a good question. The juicer would easily press and squeeze a whole lemon. It's not about the whether it can or can't do it. The reason I do it, it releases more juice and more flavour. It's not trapped inside that hard skin in the lemon. So little slices like that. And I'm going to put about half in this one. Okay, let's see how much juice we've got here. Of course, if your apples like this one, if they're too big and they won't fit into the machine, what do you do? You just one cut. Maybe two cuts if they're a big apple and then throw it into the juicer. All right, so you can use whatever apples you've got at home. Okay, let's pop that in there. Now, can you see the colour, what I was talking about before? That's a healthy apple juice with the lemon, with the ginger, helping to detox, helping to cleanse the system out. Let's give it a taste test. Oh, it's so tangy and so bitey and so refreshing. You're going to love it. I am absolutely certain of that. Okay, let's put that one to the side. Now let me just, before we finish up today, I'll pop all that in there. Let's do a little clean up through here. Okay, before we finish up today, what I want to do is tell you what Kubins is offering for this B8000 cold press juicer. All the attachments that I have shown with the juicer today, the citrus attachment, the sorbet, the smoothie, are all going to be thrown in as gifts when you purchase the B8000 cold press juicer. Normally the juicer on its own is $599. Kubins are going to take $100 off, so it's going to be $499 and you're going to get all the attachments, the accessories, $150, $160 worth of accessories for free. So what a great saving. Over $250 worth of extras Today, if you look at the link below in the description, you'll be able to follow the link and purchase. Now, if you've already got the B8000 cold press juicer at home and you're thinking, well, I didn't get those attachments, I didn't get the accessories, then there's also a link where we give you 50% off all the accessories, the citrus juicer. And I'm gonna chuck in, of course, a copy of my book, the Juice Chef book with that beautiful recipe that we made today, the apple, lemon and ginger, in as well as part of the deal. So jump online if you haven't got yourself a cold press juicer. This is our entry level into the marketplace, a great place to start if you haven't used cold press juicer before. I highly recommend it, it's a fantastic juicer. It's one of our most awarded juicers, it's recommended by Choice Magazine most of the years and it's a really fabulous juicer. Let me bring out what we made just to finish up. Okay, here, pop this in here. So have a look at that. This is a juicer, yet we were able to make so much different ingredients. We've got the mango and lime sorbet. We've got the almond milk, fantastic almond milk. We've got the apple sauce with the beautiful apple rings or apple donuts that we put together. And the final juice there, the apple, lemon, and ginger. All of this, guys, at a really affordable entry-level price for a cold press juicer. I know you're going to love it. You're going to have heaps of fun in the kitchen. Get the kids involved. 
get out, make a day, enjoy turning what Mother Nature has to offer into beautiful food and drinks. That's it from me again in the kitchen. I hope you've had some fun. Happy juicing. <laughs>